a round of the life of Saint Joseph. Entering into the divine volition, into the humanity of Jesus, where I find everything and everyone, I find here Saint Joseph, along with all his works, words, heartbeats, breaths and thoughts. And since I also find everyone else, I invite all souls to accompany me in this round of the life of Saint Joseph. If any refuse, I substitute for them, so that the Father is not defrauded of the glory that is his right in this round. When we begin to look at St. Joseph, we realise that there is not a lot of information about him, so we ask our Blessed Mother, dear Louisa, and St. Joseph himself to assist us as we go through his life in this round. By locating ourselves to that moment, when Mama Mary is told by the temple elders that she is now of a marriageable age and is to be married, and she accepts their authority, knowing that the blessed Holy Trinity of whom she is familiar would not desert her in her vow of virginity. We ask for the faith that Mary had to accept what is not easy to accept, particularly if by human standards or looking with human eyes, it doesn't make sense. We come into the place where the spouse of Mary is being decided. Joseph is chosen from the men of a marriageable age and of good standing with the elders in the temple by means of drawing straws. This was done in order that the Lord God makes the decision, not the elders. Mary tells us, that both she and Joseph had independently taken vows of chastity and though very shy with each other initially, they rejoiced when each discovered this about the other. So they were to live as husband and wife, with the husband loving his wife the way that Christ loves his church, laying down his life for it, and the wife being in blessed obedience to her husband. When both these ordinances come together, each complements the other, and it is a great source of blessing. Please, Lord, bless all married couples, that they may live good and holy lives in harmony with one another, and forgive those who do not live by this biblical teaching. In reparation for all broken or disordered marriages, we offer to you, all the acts of the marriage between Mary and Joseph. St. Joseph, now husband of Mary, is put to a test by God. Mary is found to be with child while, not, while still not living at his house, and this concerns Joseph. He was intending to put her away, as did not desire her to be stoned for adultery, when he was instructed to take her to his house by an angel in a dream. Joseph immediately rises from his bed and goes to collect his wife to bring her home to him. There will be no scandal. Joseph understands that Mary has taken a vow of virginity and we are told that he understood from the angel that the child was holy and from God. May we also, O oh Lord, be prompt in obeying the Holy Spirit when he speaks to us. Give us discernment and courage. Forgive us for our tardiness and lack of courage, our lack of faith when we look into our own shortcomings rather than allowing God to use us as he will where we are. Let us travel further into the life of Joseph. We bilocate now to the town where the young couple is living. When news comes that everyone is to return to the place of their birth, for Joseph this is Bethlehem. Since both know the scriptures well and Mary is close to birth, we join with them as they give glory and praise to God for this turn of events. So while it will be an arduous journey, Though they need no understanding to obey, as faith is all, 
They do, in fact, understand how God employs all things to bring about his own objectives, and we accompany them as they travel. Much of the time passes in silence, each contemplating the events and the majestic will of God, speaking only to ensure the ease or comfort of the other, we journey with them. At last we all arrive at Bethlehem, and to our astonishment, there is no room for the king of creation. Joseph, in his concern for the mother and soon-to-be-born child, is tireless in knocking on doors and asking for accommodation for them. When offered the only place in town that isn't filled to overflowing by all returned citizens for the census, Joseph immediately gets to work cleaning the stables, warming the hay and preparing a place for Mary to give birth. He then prepares an eating trough for the newly born child when Jesus arrives in our midst. There is no indication of any frustration on the part of this holy family when no place can be found, just joyful acceptance of God's will to be done. May we always accept the conditions that we find ourselves in, whatever they may be. Let us always be mindful that even in trying circumstances, God is with us and always in control. Dear Papa Joseph, we ask for your protection as you protected Mama Mary and baby Jesus. We ask for your prayers as we struggle through this life as you did. We ask you to include us in that pure holy love that you held for our wonderful blessed Mama. And we offer to the Heavenly Father all the acts of you, Joseph, from when you set out to Bethlehem to when you returned years later to Nazareth. Dear Papa Joseph, understanding who this beautiful babe is and that Mary is the mother of God, you remain only in the background to ensure that all goes as it should. We ask for this spirit of humility, of knowing who we are and what our role in life is, whether it is to be out front or to be hidden in the background. Amen. Joseph once again, after a dream, hastens to do what he is bid. And when told to take the child and its mother to Egypt, unhesitatingly does so. They are now refugees. Like so many displaced persons today, through tyranny, war or natural disasters, may we always see in the refugee our dear holy family and treat them as such. Papa Joseph, you worked with your hands to support your family and taught your son Jesus to do the same. May we always be aware of the need to always be productive in work or even in retirement for those who cannot work, whether from lack of opportunity, employment opportunities, ill health or age. May we not consider that we what we can do, that is, Pray for all is less productive than paid employment. Therefore, Papa Joseph, invest us all with your own diligence in working. At the end of this round, we finish by thanking the blessed and ever holy Trinity for you, Joseph, for his love for our blessed mother, his love for our beautiful Jesus, and his love for you, God. Thank you, dear Papa Joseph, for your example on how a husband should be, a father should act, and a creature should love God. So, most holy Trinity, we offer to you the life of Saint Joseph, every heartbeat, breath, thought, act, and word. May this be to your infinite, perfect, and eternal glory. May it be for further accidental glory for Saint Joseph in heaven. May it bring blessings upon the earth, both in the time of Joseph, Joseph and Mary and in our time. 
May it infiltrate the kingdom of the divine will on earth as in heaven. Amen. Fiat. Fiat. Fiat.